Hey guys, this is TF Lego 98 and today I'll be reviewing the Studio Series Leader Class Scavenger. So first taking a look at the details. Um on his face there are these sort of spiky bits and there is that lower jaw right there. Just like all of the other constructicons, the face is very insectoid. Um there are these two giant wheels up here. There's one up above the head and one below the head. Um, only one of them rolls, the bottom one rolls pretty freely. Um, on this surface right here, if I move his arms a bit, it, it can roll quite well. But unfortunately, the upper one can't roll just due to transformation. Um, the arms are very long and strange looking. Um, I don't mean that in a bad way, they look very interesting, but they're definitely quite different from the design of a, of a more humanoid transformer. Um, on the back of, on the back, there isn't really anything here, it's just the back of his spine, I guess. And there are these two big support beams that hold up the bottom wheel, and in the movie, the, these two beams hold up the top wheel, but actually here, there, there's also this pin part that just goes straight up into the wheel. So, yeah, that's basically it for details. You can't really see much of his vehicle mode here, so I think that they definitely hid his vehicle mode very well. Taking a look at articulation, it is fairly good. Um, the head is on a ball joint there is a hinge behind it so it can look up can look down can tilt side to side and rotate um the shoulder joints it can splay out about that far and it can swivel about 360 on a soft ratchet joint um the other shoulder part it can go in that far go out that far not the full 90 degrees but the shoulder joint right here can ratchet forward that far and it can also ratchet back about that far but I, I really don't want to move that joint too much because it is very tight and hard to move but it can just swivel backwards pretty far um, for the bicep it can swivel a full 360 degrees the elbow can bend right there another bend right there and there is a joint right here at the wrist and the fingers can separate a little bit and other than that there's not much articulation other than the wheel rolling and due to the nature of the transformation it can swivel around slightly so yeah, articulation, um, this design is very strange looking, but it does have quite a lot of joints and it can be quite poseable if you know how to use it. Just a side note here, it can be quite difficult to get Scavenger to stand up on his wheel. You, you kind of have to use his arms to prop him up. You just kind of have to like squeeze them down and use this part as the palm so they can kind of angle down it's quite difficult to do that but it is possible so he so scavenger can definitely stand up like this for size comparisons um the other constructicons are currently transformed into their combined modes and i don't really feel like transforming them right now since it would take like around 15 minutes to do that so i'm just gonna compare him with some other figures um here he is with Studio Series Deluxe Class Dino. The shade of red is a little different. This is definitely much darker. Um, here he is with Optimus Primal. There, you, as you can see, Optimus Primal is about the size of a large deluxe. Um, they are about the same head to head, but Scavenger is definitely a lot bigger. And here he is with Siege Starscream in his robot mode. As you can see, the scavenger with his entire top wheel counted in towers over Starscream a lot. So yeah, he's pretty massive. The transformation to vehicle mode is quite complex. 
So parts of the figure will be off screen at some time just due to the sheer size of the figure. But I will try to keep everything on screen. So first what I like to do is just come to the support struts and untab them like so. And you can just rotate them down like so. And then you're going to want to take the bottom wheel and, oops, that wasn't supposed to happen. Kind of untab it from each other like so. These sections are the treads in vehicle mode. So you just kind of spin them around like so. And then you're going to want to take this entire head assembly and spin it forward. And then you're going to want to rotate it around and then keep rotating these parts until you can tab these wheels together. They will click in like so. And then you can just do the exact same procedure on the other side, just tab in really nicely. And you can unfurl the treads like so with these hinges and do the exactly the same thing on the other side like so um then what you're going to want to do is come to the shoulders untab these panels here same thing on the other side just kind of unfurl that can be a little difficult at times Hold on a second. And once you've got that unfurled, it's a lot easier to do off camera when you don't have a camera in your face. Um, so once you've had, once you do that, you just kind of take these these bits, and you can just keep them like there. But you're gonna want to take the treads, rotate them like this, and then take this entire assembly after you should rotate the treads the other way take this entire assembly rotate it around and just kind of squish everything into place can be a little hard to see but you just rotate this at an angle just flip this out like so and then you're going to want to tab everything in like so like that and then take the cab flip it down and flip it around some things will start to untab which is kind of annoying but next thing you're going to want to do is just take this section flip it around like so take this fold it up rotate it around and then just Clip everything in like so. We'll need to straighten out everything like so. Mm -hmm. It's quite difficult on camera. And a lot of things will start to untab. So you just need to keep everything locked in. And then you rotate the arm so they're pointing the same direction. Kind of squish everything in. And then the arms will tab together very securely like so. So will the hands. Like so. It will be quite difficult lining all these tiny little tabs up. But once you've got it, you just clip it in. Pretty sure that's already. Nope. There's a tab I forgot to line up. So this transformation is quite difficult, but once you've got everything lined up, it just tabs in like so. You can take this panel, flip it up, and that's pretty much the entire vehicle mode completed. One step I almost forgot is that the bottom wheel, these sections will flip out like so and they will tab into some tiny little slots on the wheels or the treads. 
can be a little difficult, but they will just lock in like so, and they will further solidify the alt mode, like so. So yeah, that's the entire transformation done. So taking a look at Scavenger's vehicle mode, overall it is pretty good. The treads are a decent size. Um, they do have some nice silver paint highlights over there. And on the top, it is quite messy. You can kind of see through it. These parts, I think, look okay, but I just wish there was maybe a panel that could clip onto this and it could, like, cover up this part. Um, the front, I think, is okay, but I have figured out something that's kind of weird. Um, so... If you have overload, you know, this piece that comes with overload, um, if you just move up the scoop, you can kind of squeeze this in here. And if you push it hard enough, it actually kind of tabs in. And there is this little groove that this top connector part does fit perfectly into. I don't think it's in the instructions, but I usually don't look too carefully at the instructions. So it might be in there, but I'm pretty sure it's not. So yeah, I'm not really sure if this was intended. Um, in this mode, the arm can still turn. It is very tight though, and this and this part will probably pop off. But if you just have the stationary, this is a pr is a much better storage option for this part than the other then overload kind of have to have the arm in a special position to do it but it is a lot looks a lot better than the overload storage position um anyways the the vehicle mode is pretty good overall um the arm is articulated there is a hinge joint right here a hinge here another hinge here there is some hydraulic detailing it looks like it actually works but it doesn't and i wish these were painted more to line up with this and as you saw before this this base joint is very 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 tight as it is the arm joint for devastator so it really has to be quite tight but i can barely even move this so I think it's a bit overly tight, but anyways, it's a pretty good vehicle mode overall. Transforming to Devastator mode is quite complex, um, and there are some parts that are quite fiddly, but so to, you, the first step, you kind of have to split open the front arm into the robot mode arms. I find it a lot simpler to use one of these lego mini not minifigure brick separator pieces you can just kind of wedge it in here and it really helps to detach everything as you can see now everything is properly detached so yeah using one of these um you probably have one of the at least one of these lying around your house somewhere so yeah, these are pretty easy to get, and also they work really well for this. So the front part is a little more difficult to separate, just because of how small the tabs are. You can do, if I use that again, that works really well. So you just split open everything like so. I'm just gonna want to untab the wheels. Like so. Take this part and fold it back up. Um, you're going to want to take the treads, refold them up, do the same thing on each side. Sorry that some stuff isn't in the camera. Um, I'm just going to move my camera back slightly. This, you're just going to want to take this flip it up into its robot mode configuration and then take this fold it down take this part fold it around like so and you're going to want to take these unfold them and then you can just take these 
rotate them around like so. Do the same thing on the other side. It can be quite difficult. Just tab that in and then take this section, fold it down like so, which will reveal a couple of slots and tabs. So you just kind of have to fiddle with everything until it gets right. And then these two sections will tab in like so. And then these sections will tab into that tab. And it is very secure. They will tab in like so. And then you can just take this head, fold it down, take these sections, and you can just kind of fold them back and take these and kind of just rest them together. Can be a little bit of fiddly. Just going to want to take that, rotate it all the way back. To take the head and everything else that's untabbed and re-tab it up and that's pretty much it for this section turning to the arms you are going to want to ratchet them down take this section rotate it around 180 degrees and this will just kind of curl up like so revealing the combiner port right here for the arms um, you're going to want to do the exact same thing on the other side. Rotate it around and flip it around like so. And then take this cab, unfurl it, and then just tab it in in a different position like so. And that's pretty much the entire combined torso mode. And yeah, this mode is quite large. It will be most of the torso of Devastator. Um, Overload will tab in with this massive port right here. And for the arms, there is this slot and this other slot right here. These parts will connect to Overload, not Overload, um, Scrapper and Hightower to form the upper arm. And so yeah, I think this looks, this mode looks pretty cool. And it definitely foreshadows the, uh, the upcoming Devastator. So yeah, my overall thoughts on this figure is it's pretty good. Um, the transformation is quite difficult just due to how tight the joints are. But it's, re it's really, really good overall. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this review. Bye.